this scripture which we will read is uh, Genesis chapter 49, beginning at, cha- at verse 29, and we'll go through chapter 50, and I do intend to finish this, because after Christmas I want to start a series on the book of Psalms with you. We have here the death of Jacob and the death of Joseph and they are preparing for their resurrections. Genesis 49:29 Then he gave them these instructions. This is Jacob, I'm about to be gathered to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron, the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre in Canaan, which Abraham bought as a burial place from Ephron, the Hittite, along with the field There Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave in it were bought from the Hittites. When Jacob had finished giving instructions to his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed, breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. Joseph threw himself upon his father and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph directed the physicians in his service to embalm his father Israel. So the physicians embalmed him, taking a full 40 days, for that was the time required for embalming. And the Egyptians mourned for him 70 days. And when the days of mourning had passed, Joseph said to Pharaoh's court, If I have found favor in your eyes, speak to Pharaoh for me. Tell him, My father made me swear an oath and said, I am about to die. Bury me in the tomb I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go up and bury my father, then I will return. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear to do. So Joseph went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him, the dignitaries of his court and all the dignitaries of Egypt, besides all the members of Joseph's household, his brothers and those belonging to his father's household. Only their children and their flocks and herds were left in Goshen. Chariots and horsemen also went up with him, and it was a very large company. When they reached the threshing floor of Atad near the Jordan, they lamented loudly and bitterly, And there Joseph observed a seven-day period of mourning for his father. When the Canaanites who had lived there saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, the Egyptians are holding a solemn ceremony of mourning. That is why that place near the Jordan is called Abel Mizraim. So Jacob's sons did as he had commanded them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave in the field of Machpelah, near Mamre, which Abraham had bought as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite along with the field. After burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt together with his brothers and all the others who had gone with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived 110 years and saw the third generation of Ephraim's children. Also the children of Maker, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knees. 
Then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Joseph made the sons of Israel swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up from this place. So Joseph died at the age of 110 and after they embalmed him, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. One of the greatest trying times for a family is the time when a parent is dying. The parents need for fellowship and for care and for comfort and for your presence is real. Some of you know that. Some of you have experienced that and it's no longer part of your life because your parent has died. How children respond to elderly parents reveals a tremendous amount about the children. Parents who have nurtured their children, parents who have trained their children, parents who have sacrificed their time, their money, their material possessions for the sake of their children are going to be blessed. Because when we get old, Ecclesiastes talks about that, calls it the evil days. And some of you are knocking on that door. Or maybe you're not knocking, the door is opening. And we're all going to get there. Honoring your father and your mother is not only obedience. It's care. It's loving. It's laying your life down and the things you want to do and the house you would like to clean and the beans you would like to harvest sometimes take a back seat to mom and dad. Shame on the children who ignore old parents. And I'm going to say that to grandchildren as well. Shame on you if you don't visit grandpa and grandma. Joseph loves Jacob. Joseph ministers to Jacob for 17 years because God lives in Joseph. This is a restored family. And all the blessings which we studied the last two weeks really are blessings that are coming to this family in the last days. So that's about. And so here you have in chapter 49, 29, you have Jacob pre-planning his funeral. I don't know whether you have your funeral planned or not. I want to tell you, get it done. Because a funeral is an expression of faith. Either of the one who planned it, who is the deceased, or it's going to be planned by someone else and it will have their reflection of faith. What scripture do you want read? What hymns and psalms do you want sung? Jacob says to Joseph and to his sons, I'm not Egyptian. I'm seed that belongs in the land of Canaan. This is the land God promised. Bury me where Abraham is buried and Sarah and Isaac and Rebekah and my wife Leah. Because the place of burial is your place of resurrection. All the funerals which I have attended 
or conducted are always focused on the resurrection. Canaan is the sea, it is the land where God's people are going to begin to establish the kingdom of God throughout the world. It begins in Canaan. And it's there. And it goes to Judea and Samaria and then to the uttermost parts of the world. Every time a saint is buried, we are burying the seed of the new heaven and the new earth. You agree with that, right? That's why it's so important the person you marry is the person you want to rise from the dead with. You're not going to be married in the new heaven and new earth. That's what Jesus says. Okay? But your burial place, the next action that happens to you on the earth is your resurrection. You are seed in the soil. You are yeast in the dough. You're going to live and reign on a new heaven and in a new earth. And Jacob has that vision and he says to his boys, don't you bury me in Egypt. I believe in the resurrection. And then Jacob dies in verse 33. He dies right there. It's as if God enabled him to bless his children now he says, that's over. I'm going to die. Bury me in this specific place. And he dies. And the Bible says, this is the Holy Spirit, he's gathered to his people. It's a wonderful thought of death. There are way more people that you're going to be joined with at death than you're living with today. Right? Janet's getting, you know, uh, poinsettias. And by the way, these are very beautiful, and I have an idea of where they came from. But they're gorgeous, and you are giving them in memory. Those are people who are living that you're going to join. You are gathered to your people, the people of God. Joseph closes the eyes of Jacob, by the way. He throws himself upon his father, weeps and kisses him. Has Jacob embalmed? If you want to know all about embalming, you can read all about it. It's not a taxidermist. can tell you a whole lot about embalming. But the Egyptian embalmed only some people. Royalty. Because they had a firm belief that this body was going to be needed in the afterlife. Well, it's needed but it doesn't need to be embalmed. It's going to be resurrected, according to 1 Corinthians 15. It's sown a perishable body. It rises imperishable. Well, we can go into that further, but I'm going to skip that. They mourn for Jacob for 70 days. The Egyptians do. And they have this huge funeral. Just massive, hundreds, thousands of people go to bury Jacob. And then in verse, 20, uh, verse 15, now you have the second test. One test of your family is going to be what happens when mom and dad need help. There's a much more difficult test. What happens to the family when mom and dad are buried. And they aren't there to discipline and to lay down the law and to give direction. Many families, you know in your mind, break apart because all the roots of the sinful nature still living down in there, they have been repressed. I don't want mom upset. I don't want dad upset. But now dad and mom are gone. What happens with the family's possessions? And praise God for families who die with nothing. <laughs> there's nothing to fight over. But for those where there's wealth 
and where there is investment and where there are treasures, so to speak. I want that. You know? You, you, you got this with me. I remember Dad gave you that and he didn't give me that. And bango, the family becomes a family that's fighting. If the Holy Spirit lives in your family, this will never be a problem. It's where the family is not governed by the Holy Spirit. For you have this problem. Joseph's brothers remember clearly how they treated Joseph. And they were thinking, well, Jacob's still alive. Dad's still here. Joseph will be kind to us. But now Dad is gone. Joseph is in power. Joseph has the means, and he does. Joseph can make law. He could have them all destroyed. He could have them all slammed into slavery, whatever. And so they come to Joseph, and they say, Hey, Joseph, you know what Dad said before he died? He told us to come to you and ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph had already told them, don't be afraid of me. Don't stand back. I'm not here to hurt you. It's God who brought me to Egypt. You meant it for evil. God meant it for good. Joseph is a man. I think he's 39 years old right now. He's a man who is gripped by the Word of God. Joseph weeps. He says, oh, he says, you're thinking that way. I have no intention of destroying you. My purpose in life is to give you life. They said, we'll be your slaves. Joseph says, don't be afraid. Am I the place of God? No. God's in authority, not me. I believe every part of my life has been God-directed, God's sovereignty in my life. Sure, I was so. Sure, you mistreated me, but it is God's direction. Now, I'm not going to throw God out and put myself in place of God and say, okay, you guys, we're going back here now, whatever many years it is, and now pay up and I'm going to get you. No, your sins are forgiven, he says. I will provide for you and your children. You see how Joseph is like God? You see how Joseph is like Jesus? Your sins are forgiven. And you can say, well, God, you know, (laughs) may I have another day of living in this home and eating this food and having this health and having this family? Are you going to take it away? Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Go! Sin no more. These are Joseph's brothers. These are the men who are of Joseph's family. Jesus considers you His brother, sister. There is nothing that Jesus is going to do to destroy you. Then you have this wonderful thing about Joseph. He stays in Egypt. For 110 years, he is there. I think he lives in Egypt a total of 93 years. Jacob is 93 plus 17, 110. Come on, buddy. Is it? 93 years. He sees his great 
great grandchildren. And they're put on his knee at birth. What does that mean? That was a way in that culture that you said, this child belongs to you, Joseph. Then Joseph said to his brothers, verse 24, Joseph dies before any of his brothers. And he says, I'm about to die. God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's covenant. The covenant does not depend on Jacob. The covenant does not depend on Joseph. The covenant does not depend on some preacher or some elder or some parent. God establishes the covenant and the covenant depends on God's Word. When I leave, Joseph says, the covenant remains. Don't worship me. It's with your God that you have the covenant. God will surely come to your aid, verse 25. Now it's going to take another 300 years. The descendants of Jacob increased to around 2 to 3 million. And Joseph says, when that happens... Take my bones and bury them in Canaan. He's preparing for the resurrection. And Joseph is embalmed. He is not buried. Do you see that? He's put in a coffin. Now, if you will take just a couple minutes. Exodus 13. Would you look at Exodus 13, verse 19? Where you have the Exodus. Exodus 13, 19. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear an oath. He had said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up with you from this place. Go to Joshua 24, 32. The word of the Lord. Joshua 24, 32. They are now in the promised land. All the Israelites have received their land by lot. And here's what happens. 32, chapter 24 of Joshua and Joseph's bones, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem in the tract of land that Jacob bought for a hundred pieces of silver from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. This became the inheritance of Joseph's descendants. That's the story of Jacob. A Jacob who's been redeemed whose family has been restored. It's a family of life. May that be true of you and your family as well. Amen. Father, thank you for revealing to us Jacob and Joseph, how you bless us with your promises, with the words of redemption and restoration where we live in peace because You have declared peace with us. May we live in peace together. In Jesus' name, Amen.